Have you ever wondered if you can get through Assassin's Creed Syndicate without being seen by the enemies? Well, in this episode, we attempt that with the first mission, and you can see us killing Ferris here, successfully. Hello, Pack, and welcome to the channel. My name is Josh Quinn, aka Stealthy Doggo. I'm a speedrunner of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and I've been playing the game for over 250 hours. If you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with our videos. I've always wondered if, when playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate, if you could get through the entire game without ever being seen by an enemy. The quick answer is no, but through this playthrough, we're going to be trying that with each and every mission, and I'll be explaining at different points where it is and isn't possible to get through the mission without being seen by enemies. Let's get started. Now, the one caveat is that there are three enemies here at the beginning that you will always have to fight, no matter what. The combat is initiated after a scripted walk forward. There is no skipping over this. And so these three are the only exceptions here in the first part of this mission. There will be an additional exception later, which is during the train sequence with Ferris. But uh, we'll cover that when it comes up. So as you can see here, these, the, these three individuals, really easy to kill. They are part of the uh, training that Assassin's Creed Syndicate puts you through uh, in order to become an assassin. This is just teaching you the basics of brawling and the fights that occur in Syndicate. And then the fun part begins. We need to figure out the routing for getting from here to Ferris's office without being seen. Now the one thing I will say is in this playthrough, we're going, or in this series, we're going to count being seen as when the detection arrow from the enemies uh, turns yellow for even the slightest bit. So whistling will cause a detection arrow to show up. They're aware that something is amiss or that we're around, but they haven't seen us. They haven't been warned. The, the arrow won't turn yellow yet. And so in this section, we are going to walk up. Our attempt here was to see if we could kill this individual at the top of the stairs before they see us. And thus we have our first restart of the playthrough. Now from here on out, I will be restarting it at the opening of these doors and fast forwarding the gameplay will go to a normal speed and we'll walk through uh, the next section and hopefully get all the way to Ferris. So again, we kill this first individual with a throwing knife from the, uh, the top of the crane. And since we know that we can't get to him up there uh, without him noticing us, we're gonna try to take a wide berth here He's gonna walk away, so we're gonna go ahead and climb this stair, uh, this uh, building, unseen, fortunately. Now we can see here there's a, a jump off point, but there's a guard on the right there, which we're gonna go ahead and take out. And then we see that there's a guard here on the left, we're a little worried about seeing us. And there's a guard down here at the bottom, so we're gonna go ahead and take out the one on the far side first, just in case he turns around, and then do an air assassination on this one. So after the air assassination, obviously we want to loot as many, bodies, uh, as many bodies as we can, trying to get our throwing knives back up. And we can see here there is an individual walking up, so we think that we're safe. We uh, we walk forward a little bit, we, we mark everybody else, we walk forward a little bit, and unfortunately as he turns, he does notice us here at the top of the stairs. So that's a restart. Back to the beginning, we're leaving the uh, the factory, running up to the uh, the... Crane. Everything here is very, uh, very similar to last time because we weren't a we weren't seen up until we got to the top of the roof. So here we go. Kill him. Jump down. Search the body. Everything's still going just as planned. We uh, slow down a little bit here just to make sure we don't get seen by the guy on the right. It'd be a very unfortunate restart if we did. Kill this guy on the right. Kill this one on the left and the one over here. So we didn't get the uh, air assassination here because the uh, the guy we were supposed to air assassinate is actually the one we threw the second knife at, but all the same. We still have one knife left, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that nobody else is around. We see our target is up against the uh, the wall, and he's out. We don't have any more knives, so we're gonna jump back down, and loot this body here. After these guys move out of the way. We do get a throwing knife here, so we're gonna climb back to the top of the uh, building, and we're going to take out the second guard. So we're now with zero throwing knives, but fortunately, no enemies around. So we're gonna go ahead and loot this body and the other two that we killed. 
hoping for a throwing knife or two. Spoiler alert, we do not get a throwing knife. We can see there's a guy over there on the left we gotta be a little bit careful of. We can go ahead and loot this body and the next body. And unfortunately, we have no throwing knives to continue with. We know that there's at least two more guards we're gonna have to deal with, maybe a third one coming up. And so I take some time here in the haystack to take a look around me, see where we have people. And it looks like we got the two guards here up on the left. We're gonna go around on the right and lo and behold, there is an individual here on the right. So this is where the first whistle comes in. We can go ahead and use the whistle. As you can see here, the arrow shows up. He is suspicious of something but no yellow shows up, so that's why we're gonna go ahead and count this as not being spotted. We're gonna go ahead and loot his body, hoping again for a throwing knife, and unfortunately there is not one. We do have another individual here up on the right, but he does seem to be far enough away we don't have to worry too much about him. We're gonna see if there's any other uh, targets. Unfortunately there are not, so we're gonna have to go for this guy here on the right, hoping again that he'll have a throwing knife for us. We can see our other two over there and this guy here on the right. We're not sure we're gonna be able to get him on a clean assassination, so we're just gonna go for the whistle yet again. So, hide in a very safe spot. Go ahead and whistle. And as he jitters his way forward, go ahead and stab him and loot his body. Yet again, hoping for the, uh, hoping for the throwing knife and not getting one. So now, here we could make the run for the door and see if we can get into uh, the next part of the level uh, unseen. However, I had already been trying this for a significant amount of time uh, and did not want to do yet another reset. So we uh, we decided to go with the more cautious route. We're gonna come up here on the, uh, the landing, stick around here. They both got suspicious of us because of the, the jump up. But with no yellow on either marker, I think we're safe. And we go ahead and do the whistle, which I was worried was going to call them both over because they both yet again um, identified. But only one does end up coming over, which is in our benefit because we can just get the stab here and go for the loot, hoping yet again against all hope for another throwing knife. Yet again, we don't get it. So time to go ahead and lure the other guy, which we're just uh, we're just poking our head up here to see where he is. We can get an idea of where we should be whistling at. We can go back around to where this other individual was, hide down here, come over right behind him. We do think about going up the uh, the ramp, but we're not sure about it. We do decide instead to just go ahead and climb the building. He doesn't seem to be turning around at any point. We're gonna go ahead and skip that assassination. So far, so good. We're inside, getting the uh, the stealth tutorial. Very ironically, because we're very aware of how stealth works now in this game. Just doing a really quick check. We do have uh, the hole in the wall on the right that we want to go through. We do think about jumping down. We do see there's one guard and we are a little worried about the second guard over there and any guards that might be underneath this walkway. We weren't 100% we weren't sure there weren't any. So we decided to uh, go for this one here inside of this alcove. Wait for him to turn around and we're gonna go ahead and walk up to him and stab him from behind. We could have probably whistled from, done this a little bit quicker, but all things considered, this was the safer route I felt than uh, trying to whistle him over and maybe alerting somebody downstairs. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over on the pipes. Most guards in the Assassin's Creed games don't look up, so we don't have too much to worry about. And uh, the controls are a little bit finicky when uh, walking on pipes because the game seems to like to hold forward longer than you do and causing some some weirdness but we are now in the second room inside the factory we do have uh, the bar telling us around us the the presence uh, bar around us telling us that there's an individual really close to us we're gonna go ahead and get this assassination fortunately nobody else is upstairs with us even though the bar shows that somebody could be close by that is actually why we ran out of there instead of looting the body is because we didn't want to risk being seen by anybody else so this is a very standard just run up and uh, go into the next section, which is the, uh, the the smeltery section of Ferris's ironworking. After the uh, quick cutscene skip, we're gonna go ahead and climb up and go through uh, the altitude. Again, these NPCs don't look up, so unless you make a lot of ruckus, the uh, the game allows you to sneak by most things unnoticed. 
Oh, after we jump down, we have this one guard here. A little bit worried. We do have one throwing knife if we end up needing it, which we don't. We go for the uh, active assassination. Check to see if we can climb out of this place. We can't, so we're just gonna climb over to here. And this is it. This is the, the last stretch before we end up killing Ferris. And yet again, the game decides that we were holding forward longer than we were and runs us off the pipe instead of running us down the uh, the parkour track. You can see there's a couple enemies there on the bottom right, and that's why we chose to take the uh, the altitude route. And here we are, and there's Ferris. After a quick stab and a cutscene skip, we're going to go ahead and leave. And with that, we are now at the train, which marks the end of Ferris's mission. Unfortunately, there are enemies here that are unskippable. We're going to go ahead and go into active stealth, try to throw a knife at one of them, and run as far forward as we can. You can see we actually haven't been detected yet until the two individuals jump onto the train. It doesn't seem skippable. They, they have noticed us. I have attempted this uh, in previous attempts to try to get them either killed before the train takes off or um, to run up fast enough that they don't notice us. This is a fun little thing where the uh, the guy didn't seem to notice us even though he dropped down right next to us. It worked out. Nobody seems to uh, to keep an eye on us and we do end up losing their attention. So minus the one guy we threw a knife at, no one's, no one's been killed on this train. No one seems to notice us even though we are right next to this individual. And that's gonna wrap up this mission. Of course, the rest of this mission is all non-combat. We're gonna end up crossing the bridge the cutscene's gonna play, we're gonna climb down the broken tracks and into victory. So, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much for uh, for checking out the video. If you do like this kind of content, go ahead and feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, we will be producing one of these hopefully every week, so next week be on the lookout for uh, episode two, which is Evie's mission, which is a lot easier to do stealth than Jacob's mission. Jacob's mission focuses mostly on the brawling and the combat, whereas Evie's missions tend to focus more on the stealth aspect of the game. And so we'll be able to get through hers relatively unscathed and with relatively shorter, a uh, fewer number of retries. Though I do expect this to get harder as time goes on. As always, I've been Stealthy Doggo. I have been your host. Thank you so much. If you want to uh, hang out with me, you can check out the Discord in the link below. I also stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash stealthydoggo. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Stay stealthy.